Greetings and welcome to day eight of our 10-day group fast, which I am hosting in a private group on Facebook. However, anyone watching this video can definitely take tips and pointers for fasting as well. And today we're going to talk about refeeding. Well, congratulations to everybody in the group and or anybody who's watching this who's made it a certain amount of time during their fast. Um, even just getting started and going a full day is worth a lot. But a lot of you have gone eight days so far without eating or by consuming a very restricted diet of fresh fruits and juices and water. Whatever fast you're doing, today we're going to talk about refeeding and why it's so important and you need to really start preparing now for your refeeding phase. Besides just leaving your body alone and not eating for an extended amount of time, refeeding is probably one of the most important components of your fast and that is how you transition from not eating to eating. It's really important because there is a condition called refeeding syndrome and it can affect you in a number of ways but basically it is a negative reaction that your body has to eating food after fasting for an extended period of time and usually it comes when you eat too much or too heavy of foods. What you cannot do absolutely cannot do is go from water fasting for 10 days to go into your favorite cheeseburger joint and getting a cheeseburger and fries. That is an absolute no-no. Your body will let you know probably almost immediately that that's not going to work and it could happen in a number of ways. If you fast for a very long time, for instance 40 to 90 days and you were to go get a cheeseburger it is a potential that you could die because your body is not able to take on that kind of load. You have to work your body back up into eating just like you would work a baby into eating, you know, going from breast milk um, to small mushy foods and then taking on some of those larger, more dense items. You need to treat your body like that. It is normally suggested that you refeed one day for every three days that you fasted. So if you fasted for three days and you want to refeed for one day, if you fasted for six days, then you want to refeed for two days. However, I suggest for optimal wellness that you, re you refeed for seven to ten days if you have done a fast over five days just to make sure that you're taking best care of you. If you are doing a juice fast or a smoothie fast or, or a juice and fruit fast, it's gonna be a little bit easier for your body to start taking on more food because it's been, you know, the insulin levels have been flowing throughout the fast and you've been digesting on some level. But even with juice fast, if you haven't been, you know, eating dense foods, then you still want to go into the refeeding process slowly. So what you should do when refeeding is start slow. The first thing I would suggest to refeed with is a juice. That can be a fruit juice, a fruit and vegetable juice, or a vegetable juice, but a juice because it is still that water consistency, but it has some minerals and some vitamins and some sugar that are going to get the body a little bit more used to digesting something. And I would say maybe do a juice, you know, do juice for a day or two. After that, you want to start taking some small amounts of high water content fruit. The most commonly referred fruits to break your fast with are watermelon, melons in general, and papaya. So watermelon is like top of the line because it is essentially water and a little bit of, you know, fibrous fruit. So it's going to be very easy for your body to take that on. And even if you are to do watermelon, it's just suggested to do one little, you know, how you cut them in triangles, one little inch thick triangle piece for your first meal and then to work your way up. This is February right now, so watermelon is not 
that abundant especially if you want to get a good watermelon that is seeded and natural but right now what you can do is get possibly some other type of light melon or papaya I love papaya and I just so happen to have one so let me show you it's gonna look something like this it's usually green when you buy it and you want to wait until it starts turning this orangey yellow color before you eat it because this is when you know it's ripe and it's also going to be a little bit softer. So yeah, this is half of papaya. I actually cut the other half of the papaya here. This is way too much food to break your fast with. This is a full dinner plate size and to break a common water fast, you want to do... I'm gonna even say take this piece off. I'm gonna say this much. That's like maybe the size of a side of vegetables on your plate. You could even do one or two pieces less than this depending on how long you've been fasting. So, you know, if you've been fasting for about 10 days, water only, and then you do two or three days on juice, then, you know, this is an appropriate size to start doing solid foods with. And this would be a meal for you. And then you would just do either juice or water. So again, high water content fruits are one of the best things to break your fast with, as well as juices. Moving on from that, you want to go into soft leafy green salads. An idea of soft greens are romaine lettuce or sometimes those hydroponic lettuces they have like a really buttery soft leaf to them. You can also do some things like cilantro. Watercress is great as well even though watercress can be a little bit spicy. An example of a tough leafy green would be kale and I would not suggest starting you know to eat kale right off the bat <laughs> because kale takes a little time to digest and if you don't chew it properly then you know it can cause gas but even then still with the salads you want to do very small portions after that you can transition into like vegetable broths or a vegetable broth with a soft mushy cooked vegetable in it such as one of those yellow summer squashes or um, some cabbage that's been cooked down to a really soft texture. So we, again, you wanna start with your juice, then small portions of high water content fruit just to get your body used to digesting some solid food. And then you can go into some buttery leafy greens and some soups, brothy soups. And then from there you can build up to some grains like quinoa and some um, vegetables and then maybe beans and nuts and seeds later. After you've started taking some small amounts of fruit, you can do smoothies. Smoothies are great um, for transitioning. However, you want to make sure that you don't do too much smoothie at one time. I tend to make really big smoothies. I know for me, I would have to portion down. I would say, you know, four ounces or eight ounces at a time. And with your smoothies, you wanna chew your smoothies. That is correct. Chew them because, again, digestion starts in the mouth. I think I said this in the last video, but you need to start getting your body used to producing those enzymes that start in the mouth, even with your smoothies. If you just start gulping down smoothies, your body is not gonna be prepared to fully digest a smoothie right after a fast. So give it as much support as possible by chewing your smoothies. Some people are kind of sensitive to sugar, whether they be diabetic and they wanna just focus on not having too much sugar. Papaya is a sweet fruit. If you wanted to start eating with something other than soft fruit, then you could go straight to the vegetable broth with very well cooked vegetables in it. And that will help you kind of start eating softer, water content foods without all of the sugar. So I just have three tips for transitioning back into eating. Number one, make sure that you are staying hydrated before your meals. So before you have, you know, your small portion of papaya or whatever you're going to eat for the first time, make sure that your digestive tract is hydrated. It digests best 
when there is water already there. So drink 12 to 30 ounces of water 30 minutes prior to your first meal so that you can start your digestive process off right. You wanna make sure you get your water in 30 minutes prior to eating, preferably an hour prior to, but you want to have 30 minutes before and after your food that you're not drinking water because you don't want to dilute your stomach acid, especially when you're refeeding. But in general, just in life in general, we don't eat and drink at the same time. If you look at animals in nature, they don't do that. So again, just make sure that you are getting your water in, but keep it 30 minutes away from your eating period. Number two Eat foods that your body normally digests well. If you know, for instance, that papaya makes your stomach hurt for, for whatever reason, I don't know. If you know papaya isn't your thing, don't just listen to me and eat papaya to break your fast. Eat foods that you know that your body will digest well. And this goes for the first 10 days after your fast. You know, even when you start transitioning back to eating solid foods, three meals a day, don't just throw your body back into eating like a big portion of beans if you know that beans normally give you really bad gas. That's not the best way to flow back into things. Um, and if you know that beans give you issues, it's probably something that you want to work up to. And you also want to do things like soak your beans before you cook them. Some people can't eat an, a large amount of produce, like large salads at a time. If you know that your body doesn't do that well processing leafy greens, then maybe don't have salads during that first 10 days and then ease into salads later. Maybe you fo focus more on high water content fruit and soft cooked vegetables versus fresh leafy greens because sometimes those can be harder on some people's digestive systems. Number three is to eat slowly and enjoy your food. Allow the refeeding process to reprogram the way that you eat and think about eating. So you can turn it into a practice of gratitude, a practice of positive energy transference. Instead of just sitting down to a meal and scarfing it down because it looks really good, maybe now you focus on First, the beauty of it. Second, the smell of it. Three, your gratitude just for having it. You know, now you're back to eating and this is such a pleasurable experience. And then four, you can focus on putting positive energy into every bite. Maybe every bite you take, you, you know, you chew it and you think about how good it is. You think about what the nutrients in the food are going to do for you, but make it more of a mindful meditative practice and it's going to actually improve your digestion by doing this because the slower we eat and the more time we take to process our food in the mouth, the better it's going to digest. And again, thoughts are things. So if you're thinking about how the food is going to positively impact your body and your energy and your life overall, the more likely it will. But it's also just important to eat slowly because your body is getting used to digesting again. You'll also notice that your taste buds have been rejuvenated during your fast, especially if you did a water fast for five days or more you are going to have that first juice or piece of papaya or piece of watermelon and it's going to taste so sweet and fresh and you're really going to have a moment. So take that moment, that first bite and then that first meal and then that first week of meals. Take the moments to really enjoy your palate and explore it more. After my first fast, I had celery for the first time. It was a completely different experience from celery in the past. I actually used to really not like the taste of celery, but it was a different celery than I've ever experienced because my taste buds were fresh and I was able to taste all of the nuances <laughs> of the celery itself. And then I was able to be more appreciative 
of celery and more accepting of celery. So now when I see celery, it's not like, ew, I'm not going to eat that. You know, it's like, okay, I'll have some celery. <laughs> so just be open to the new palate and just take your time, eat slowly, and enjoy your food. Bonus tip number four, I just thought of this. Um, take the opportunity to refeed on a set schedule and to get your body focused on eating on a set schedule. In our daily lives, we get so busy. We have to get up really early and rush to work. We have you know, kids and homework and extracurricular activities after work and school, so sometimes we eat really late and it's just not the best for the body so now that you've fasted and you've allowed your body to heal and restore itself now's a good time to get yourself back on a healthy eating schedule eating breakfast at a certain time every day maybe eight nine or ten o'clock and lunch at a certain at a set time 12 or 1 o'clock and then dinner at a set time 6 p.m. is usually a great time to eat if you're eating after 9 p.m., it's really not the best for your body's circadian rhythm. Your organs are on a clockwork, whether you're on schedule or not. And your liver really needs that time in the late evening to be able to do its work. If you're eating heavy foods at night, it's really going to affect your liver and some of your other organs in doing their best work to keep you well. So get your body adjusted to eating at set times every day for optimal health. And that is it for tips. However, you do want to start focusing on what are your next steps for your diet. So if weight loss or just general wellness is one of your goals in your fast, you may need to be changing your diet after the fast is over because as I mentioned in the weight loss video, this is not a one, you know, a quick fix. Um, if you lose weight on the fast and then you go back to your old habits, then you're going to go back to your old body eventually. So what are your next steps? Are you going to transition into a more vegetarian, plant-based lifestyle? Are you going to cut out dairy? Are you going to cut out bread? Are you going to cut out the things that you know make you gain weight or feel bad or cause blemishes and breakouts on your skin? What are you going to do to transition into your next phase of wellness? If you do have questions about transitioning to a different diet or um, just the refeeding process in general, feel free to ask me questions in the comment box below or in our Facebook group. And thank you for watching. Please like this video, comment, and subscribe to my channel so that I can continue to make videos like this. Mm. Speaking of gratitude, this papaya is going to get so much of my gratitude when this fast is over. <laughs> Two more days. Be strong.